So, a few months ago I picked up this Jones Shipman surface grinder. It, um, it's in fairly good condition for its age. It's, um, I believe it's from the 60s. There were a few elements that needed, needed some work just to get it up and running. Um, some of you may have seen the short clips that I put um, using my mobile phone when, when I actually got it up and running. The biggest problem was the electrics. Um, I'll show you in a second what it currently looks like. But the the contactors and the the main switches on the main on the front panel were shot. Um, too much noise; they they wouldn't engage. So the the original buttons on the front panel I replaced those with with newer modern ones. And I'll, I'll show you in a short while. The sump for the hydraulic pump that was caked full of all sorts of rubbish so that was taken out cleaned replaced the hydraulic fluid one of the things I'm going to be tackling today are the feed lines that pump the hydraulic fluid into the ways I think when this has been lifted there's two lifting points here and here and you're meant to use those in conjunction with the two on the top to lift the unit in a, in a balanced state However, I think whoever moved it around last time caught the, there's, there's two hydraulic lines here, or oil lines, and they're very close to these hooks. And I think what's basically happened is they've lifted it incorrectly and it's pinched some of the lines. So it, it hasn't completely blocked it off, but the, um, the flow of oil is, is restricted, I think. And obviously, with a system like this, because the ways are lubricated, um, if the if the oil doesn't get through, if the hydraulic fluid doesn't get through, then there's a greater chance of, of increased wear. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to tackle that as soon as possible, because I didn't want, even though this is an old machine, I didn't want it to suffer any more damage than it potentially currently has. H having said that, though, um, I've flattened off the magnetic chuck and the the backrest replaced um, the wheel and added temporarily a, um, a coolant pump and it seems to be cutting through I, I've run some test pieces through and I can easily get down to to a tenth finish so more than adequate for any of my needs so today what I'll be doing is finishing off the electrics I will then be replacing the feed lines for the hydraulics and a few other little maintenance bits and bobs so um, let's see how we get on these are the original buttons from the front panel you can see we have the spindle start and stop and the hydraulics and there was also a light switch however that's been lost in time the actual contacts were are the main problems so over over the years these brass contact that's no, normally um, closed no, are normally open. Over the years these contacts have gradually corroded and every time they're broke or the contacts are, are broken the, there's, the, there will be a spark. So there's build up of carbon, there's oil you can see it's, it's not in particularly good condition. So I replace that with a new set of um, sealed buttons. So this is the panel that I replaced. Um, it's just a piece of sheet steel that I cut, 2 mil thick, drilled the holes for the buttons, added them, then rewired them. The actual wiring is exactly the same as the original buttons that came out. We have a pair of normally closed and a pair of normally open, and um, that's, that's all that was required. Around the side you get the idea of what the wiring is like. Other than checking the fuses, I've not touched this part of it yet. The Whoever had previously operated the equipment left it in a, in a pretty poor state um, I'm assuming it was jury rigged to uh, to get it just to get it to work um, one, one of the fuses the wires had gone and it was replaced by a thick piece of wire which should not have been in there so I, I replaced that with something a little bit more suitable however I'll be replacing this in a short while with a an isolator switch which will replace all of this the fuses will be at the other end of the main power line. 
you can also see this is the lifting point that I was talking about before and this is the oiler line which feeds the ways so there's one here that feeds to the front and there's another one that goes to the back and you can see where a rope or chain has been slung around here and it's pushed this into the corner so it's obviously pushed it in this direction and what that's done is it's pinched the line here and it's restricting the flow of oil at the back it's similar I think that's more damage caused by someone moving it or banging into it however the the biggest problem is here so it's the same on this side and on the other side so that, this is the the other aspect the other part that I'm going to be changing so this is what I'll be replacing that switch with this is a four pole 32 amp isolator and the hydraulics or the oiler I'll be using this PVC pipe and push fit hydraulic connectors these are rated to 300 psi so more than more than adequate for the, uh, the pressure that this oil will be at so the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all of this rubbish it's no longer needed and the main feed comes in here at the top and goes back through into the actual main body of the grinder here the uh, the feed coming out at the bottom which is disconnected originally went to the extractor which I do have as well um, at the moment I don't really have space or the need for the extractor but at some point I probably will add it let's get rid of this uh, just so everyone's sure I have isolated it from the mains so there. there's no chance of electrocution and this is also a three phase supply so one two three it's currently running off a, uh, a variable frequency drive VFD While I have the opportunity, I'm just going to give it a quick clean, get rid of some of the, the muck and the grease. Just using some brake cleaner just to break that grease down. So, I need to drill two 20mm holes, one for the power going in, one for the feed into the machine where the uh, where the other fuse box was originally so first of all I'm going to do that then I'm going to drill two um, four uh, six mil holes in the corners for bolting it to the actual frame itself in fact I'll start with the uh, with those so one in each corner I get it the right way up. This is reversible so it doesn't really matter that much however I want to get one in this corner and I want to use the opposite corner for the feed going in. So do this one first. There we go. I also need to drill and tap the main body of the grinder to, um, so I can bolt this to it. I'll do that in just a moment. 
So, let's find a good position for this. What I need to do then, once I'm happy with the approximate position, I'm going to mark the holes for drilling and tapping. can now mount the case. I'm going to stick for the time being with the original steel wire armoured cable that came with it. There was about four meters on the uh, on the end and it only makes sense to continue using it for the time being until I can find a suitable replacement. Okay, so the uh, actual switch itself, there is there's a slight difference in the size on this side to that side. So what I need to do is make sure that I get it the right way around. So I want to mount it this way around and the larger of the two is on that side so it goes in that way. the cables don't get pinched.
There we go. So to get the right angle pieces off, you need to disconnect the tubing, the hose, and then you need to take this plate off because otherwise it won't rotate to unscrew. So first things first, disconnect the feed or the return, should I say. This might leak a bit of oil that's still in the little reservoir at the top. There's two uh, cap head bolts at the top in the plate. I don't think these have ever been removed. They're uh, full of gunk. Yeah, full of paint. However, this cap should now come off. There we go, and as you can see, it's full of all of the residue from over the years. As I say, I don't think this has ever been taken off, so this is bits of paste and that's going back into the system, so this, this really does need cleaning out. So, first things first, we'll get rid of all of the build-up that's inside. That's an, obviously another reason why when I saw the oil returning back to the sump, it was only trickling back when I knew that quite a lot was being pumped into it. So this is obviously a blockage. And this should really be on the maintenance for the previous owners, but they must have neglected to do it. Hopefully it won't have caused too much damage but I will need to at some point give the machine a full clean. There we go, much better. Still a few bits in the corners but I will get those out before it goes back on. What I also need to do is clean at the top here as well where there is a build up. There we go. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's a build up of oil, grease, and the residue from grinding, which is not ideal in the hydraulic system or on the ways. There's also a, a port here as well, which was blocked up, which when I opened, oil came out. So one thing I'm just checking is whether or not that's where the oil comes from, the hydraulic oil. Unscrew the existing lock. and screw the new one in. So these are the ones with the push fit connectors. They also come 
pre-lined with PTFE tape around the thread so you don't have to worry about adding it on yourself. Just get some of the muck from the corners. Okay, and then we can replace the cap. So, there's one. The next thing we're going to do is replace this T piece as well. So, take off the existing lines. Same thing, clean the, clean the hole. A little bit of paint went in there. The main case is actually tapped, uh, drilled and tapped, so the replacement part will just go straight into the same hole. And then what we need to do then is cut a length of the tubing to fit. So make this that long. There we go. So I won't bore you with all of the rest, but I will work my way around. I'll do the end plate at the back and then do exactly the same thing on the other side. And uh, I'll bring you back when I've done. So there we are. Both feeds are now in, same on the other side. Isolators in. It's a bit of clip. I've got monkey hands. The next thing to do is to test it, make sure everything works. So all of the work that I planned to do has been done. Replace the old fuse box and isolator switch with a new one. Replaced the oiler tubes and pipes with new replacements. The only thing to really do now is see if it works. <laughs>